Good afternoon from Capital One Bank Field at Maryland Stadium. Terps, wow, it's take it, take it again, take it hard again against Michigan. Uh, manage only seven points. This is Wayne Viner, that's Bruce Posner, Cordell Woodland, and this is the Big Dog Post Game Show. Bruce, what'd you see today? Did the game start yet? Yeah. I, I have a question for you, honestly. And I'm not being funny or anything. How do you assess Josh Jackson's performance today? I'm uh, not being funny. I'm serious. Uh, ineffective. Didn't really matter if he was on the field. If anything, he held the offense back. Do you think he holds the ball too long when he gets in the jam? When he was right here in this end zone, he certainly did. It resulted in an interception off a tip pass. He likes to throw a flat ball and unfortunately when there's people in the way the ball gets tipped a lot because what's sad about this game is even though Michigan broke on top it was 14 zip uh, Maryland had two opportunities to score and came away with nothing and and yet that can't happen in a game where you're 18 point underdog because they moved the ball but after that when the game turned south it like it was over you well, know I, I, I we were talking upstairs a couple of things. Number one, did you spot the obvious fake punt by Michigan? Yes, I did. What did I say? You called it. You, I you said, called it. There was no doubt the right. way they set up. Right. All right, question for you. Talk about Lance Lejean. Lejean. He was crying for him to get yeah. in there sooner. Well, I, I he, was. He's I, my guy. Here he goes. Lejean on the run. His first real carry. You know, I, I would like to see a lot more of Lance, and I think hopefully we will going forward. I mean, what does Maryland have to lose at this point? Well, the you question is, this is his second game. He gets right. four games, he burns a red shirt. Would you burn his red shirt in this year? Would you rather have him be a red shirt freshman next Can season? he play four games? Four games. And he's played two. Played two. I played four. That's it. I just saved him for Nebraska because Nebraska is a game they could win. They're not going to beat Ohio State. Really? And they're probably not going to beat Michigan yeah. State. Yeah. They can beat Nebraska. They can. Okay, so Cordell, uh, Loxley talks about the excellence he's trying to build and, and a lot of this family thing doesn't seem to be translating yet. You see most of these press conferences live. What's your take on that? It's, it's starting to get very restless in the locker room. Uh, I, I think he's, he came in with the mentality of patience, and I think he has shown patience. But, I mean, when you have games like you have today on the offensive side of the ball, which is his specialty, uh, the offense just looks completely flat. And a lot of it does have to do with Josh Jackson. Uh, he's not making good throws. He's holding on to the ball too long. It's just he, he does not add anything to this offense that needs a playmaker desperately uh, other than the running backs. He's not giving them anything. And when the defense, yeah, they gave up 38 points today, but I thought the defense played good enough to where the they score should be okay. better than they it They really did. did. Should definitely uh, be better offensive than Offensive notes. Uh, on the offensive line, Austin Fontaine gets a start with Davis out, uh, Johnny Jordan doesn't play at all, McKinney at center, and then later in the game, Spencer Anderson moves in at right tackle, so they're trying what they can up right. front. I think Chigo Conquo did okay, yeah. and for the receivers, they're not getting the ball down the field. Right. What's your assessment? I'll give you McFarlane, I'll give you Leak, and then we'll go to break. What do you think? Of give me the easy one. <laughs> all right. Yeah, Mc McFarlane started to heat up a little bit as the game went on. You saw as he got more carries, he started to get into more of a rhythm, especially in the second half. He, we didn't get the the big play, Anthony McFarlane, necessarily today. Uh, he was It was just the consistent five to six shot runs here and there. But, I mean, the defense is loading up the box, and it's all man-to-man -man coverage on the outside, and the receivers aren't winning any battles, so just fill the box. Yeah, you know, we talked in the middle of the game, and Wayne, I know you agree. First of all, Javon Leak, another touchdown run. That was brilliant, he the is, way he cut back. He is now tied the all-time Maryland kickoff return for touchdowns with Torrey Smith. Okay. Uh, we both look back at the season so far, and I think a big loss to this team, and I think we knew it when it happened, was Jason Jones. All right? He was the one true receiving playmaker on this team, along with Dante Demas, but he made Demas better because they can't concentrate on both guys. Right. And I think, you know, the lack of depth in that receiving core of, of experience and everything else, and Jason Jones being a triple threat guy, I think it really, really hurt as now we compete with the band. Well, 
And on that note, uh, we will go to break here. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show, and we'll be back in College Park in a moment. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call the Jacklitz Law Group. We have decades of experience handling truck crashes. We recognize issues unique to trucks, including black box findings and DOT regulations. We find insurance others don't know exists. Some think the only coverage is with the truck, yet we've found millions more insurance with the broker. It's important to collect information, find representation immediately. Truck cases are complex. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1 right now. CAG Federal brings a combination of military operational and commercial business experience to your organization. We mix extraordinary organizational management experience with strong leadership skills to provide your department with the best chance for success. When 99.9% .9 reliability isn't good enough, call CAG Federal at 877-797-8776 or on the web at cagfederal.com. Back in College Park, Maryland still lost 38 to 7. It's not the worst loss of the season. There were some chances there, but the season record-wise is over. It probably has been for a couple of weeks. Uh, Cordell, moving forward, what would you do? And then we'll go with Bruce. Well, I mean, we talked a little bit about Lance LeGrand. The, the decision comes now, do you want to waste his red shirt or do you want to see what you have in him? Obviously, you know, I don't think it's worth risking his red shirt right now, but do you continue to go and see the offense look as flat as they have? When you're Coach Loxley and you're brought in here to really change the dynamics of not just the team, but especially the offense, you got to get more than what you're getting from the offense. So they got to find ways to get these receivers going, get something going on the outside, get the big plays going that we haven't seen since maybe week two of the season. Bruce? Yeah, you know, you spoke, speak about week two, 63 points against Syracuse. I might study that film a little bit. But no, I, I might play Lejean, Legrand, whatever. Lejean. Lejean. It really is. Okay. Yeah. I might play him. I might start him and give him a shot in one game just to see what he can do. Maybe it's Michigan State. All right. I'm not sure. But they got to do something with the offense. And I think my answer would be is the continued attack of the run game. Why? It shortens the game, it keeps you in the game, all right? And you it lessens the possibilities of mistakes. Mistakes killed them today. That's what I would do. But I tell you what I would do the most, all right? If me and you and Cordell, I'm thinking about hoops because last night was great, all right? And you know, everybody's high on hoops right now as they should be. And it's Loxley's first year, and there's a lot more good things to come. Hey, the Caps are in first place. Well, that's true, too. And uh, and the Ravens are playing the Patriots. So, right. But anyway, mm -hmm. play it out. Play it hard. Don't get upset about being 3-9. and nine. Is that what it's going to be? It's going to be 3-9. and nine. Right. So be it. That's what it's going to be. And on that note, we're going to head into the press conference. I'm Wayne Viner, Bruce Posner. Cordell Woodland, this has been the Big Dog Post Game Show. Thanks to Rick Jacklich and Meyer Consulting. Meyer Consulting and Jerry's of Rockville. CAG Federal Consulting and Viner Four Gates. We'll see you with the players inside.